What's up, veterans, military? Today on the VA Disability Claims Process, what we are going to be talking about is the foundation of any VA disability claim. Let's get into it. Ah! So, first off, research. I'm not talking about, you know, going to the library type of research. No, I'm talking about whatever disability you plan on filing, check and make sure that it's compensatable. You can check this by going to the CFR 38, checking for that specific disability or something related to it. And on top of that, look into the M21-1 adjudication manual to see what medical evidence is needed to present to the VA in order to get that claim you know, steady the loan. Identify which VSO will be helping you throughout the process. VSO, Veteran Service Organization, they're gonna sign you with a Veteran Service Officer. Now, a lot of veterans, they have bad experiences with VSOs. Why? Because the majority of the VSOs that they're going to are, so, you know, more than likely, county VSOs. They're as old as dinosaurs, you know, Jurassic Park age. And the VSOs that are, you know, in modern organizations such as DAV, as well as in Wooden Warrior Project, some of them are not beneficial to the veteran. And when I say, regardless of wherever you identify and shop around for a veteran service officer, bare minimum, ask them a couple questions, vet them, at least they should have access to VBMS. And that's the Veterans Benefit Management System. That system allows that VSO, as well as the CMP examiner and that VA Raider, VA claim specialist to see everything that's going on with your claim once you hit submit. That's gonna be very crucial for your VSO because whenever you're going into these CMP exams, or if it's been like a couple of months, you know, like, hey, what's going on with my claim? That VSO can readily go into that system check where that claim is at, status on it, what's going on, if, if it's moving along, if it's hit a roadblock, you know, whatever the case may be. Medical evidence. Medical evidence. I know there's a lot of videos, a lot of information going out there, but bare minimum, what you need for medical evidence? A diagnosis. The VA says they will accept your medical evidence. However, we can go to the PACT Act presumptive conditions right now. One of the main reasons why they're denying veterans VA benefits is due to a lack of a diagnosis, lack of, you know, continuity of care. Top two reasons why VA is denying veterans for PACT Act presumptive condition VA claims. So don't, you know, don't believe anyone have a diagnosis prior to submitting your claim. Next, pertinent medical evidence. The VA likes to look at within a year of you submitting that claim. So if you have something, you know, from 10 years ago, two years ago, three years ago, Okay, but what have you done in the last year? You know what I'm talking about? It's because it means, okay, if you have IBS. Ah, IBS, gang! If you got IBS, you put in an IBS claim. Yeah, okay, cool. Most of the information and the medical evidence that you're supplying came from, let's say, 2018 to 2020. And it's now 2023. You submit your claim. The VA going to be like looking like, okay, has this veteran been seen for this issue since then? Well, probably not because veterans and military don't like going medical. Why? I have no idea. I mean, the main reason contributes and spawns from boot camp. It's, it's been in, you know, leaders throughout the years. It's been ingrained in us not to go into medical, not to seek medical treatment, tough it up, buttercup, you know, change your socks, drink some water, and go on a motherfucker. No, I'm talking about. So, hey, go from there. DBQs, the Disability Benefits Questionnaire. If your private physician or VA medical doctor is willing to fill out and provide you with a DBQ, it's going to exponentially help that VA claim. It's going to boost it up because that CMP examiner still has to do one as well. Next, IMO Nexus letter, the infamous Nexus letter. A lot of veterans, they go out, they pay thousands, hundreds of dollars for a Nexus letter. What pretty much a doctor evaluating your service treatment record, your current treatment record, you know, post-military, and attributing a disability to your active duty time period in absence of complaints while you were in, as well as in absence of a diagnosis while you were in. Now, if you're within that year period post-separation date, everything that you claim is still considered presumptive. However, once you pass that, it's very hard if you don't get into medical. It, it gets extremely harder months and years past your separation date and you're not getting into medical, you're not seeing doctor, 
Most people only get into the physician or go see a doctor when something serious is happening. But at minimum, you should do it, be doing an annual checkup. Enough with that. Uh, last but not least, buddy statements, personal statements gonna be your bread and butter. Your butter, I'm talking about like Irish gold butter, you know what I'm talking about? And yeah, you got a diagnosis, you got this good medical evidence, you got all this good information, you may throw a, you know, uh, medical literature document in there as well, whatever the case may be. But having a personal statement on top of that claim, followed by a buddy statement or two, depending on the type of claim, it's going to boost that claim up. It's going to prepare that claim for a possible denial. You know, if the VA denied you, like say if you want, everything was good, you had a personal statement, buddy statement, diagnosis, medical evidence, you go into that CA, CNP exam, and then that CNP examiner was just being a motherfucking uh, that day. He was being goddamn wild boar. You know what I'm talking about? And it was like, okay, the VA Raider is siding on that CNP examiner. Okay, why? If you submit a higher level review, more than likely at that higher level review, if you had all that medical evidence, everything I already stated, you will get either called back into a CNP exam or that VA Raider that's adjudicating the claim and you know looking over that claim at the higher level review can render a VA rating outright. So you wanna make sure that you're organized with your VA disability claims prior to getting back into the VA disability claims process. And it's gonna plus up that claim, plus up your monies, and at least negate some stress when getting back into the process. Hey, y'all like this type of content? Y'all know what to do. Until next time, let me take a sip because I've been talking too long. Ah! Ah! Small fucking Debo out. Y'all stay Gucci with it. 2023. Oh, yes, all right, you're the vet.